Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam Ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Ahabatu fillah The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam said Kullu ibn Adam, kullu ibn Adam, khata. Wa khayran khatayina tawabun. All the children of Adam makes mistakes and sins. That means everyone. Prophet Sallallahu said, Kullu, kullu ibn Adam khata. All, all of them make mistakes. And the best of those who makes, those who makes mistakes or makes sins is those who repent. The point is, Ahabit is not having arrogance when you've made a sin. It's not to refuse the haq in order to protect what you believe is your honor. Because your honor, in fact, only comes through adherence to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah So if you, for, if you made a mistake with regards to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah wasallam, and you don't correct it when it has been brought to your attention that you've made a mistake, then you've lessened your honor. Your honor is not raised by thinking that you make no mistakes. But your honor comes from repenting from those mistakes. Ahabatifillah. If you have heard anything from me with regards to the religion of Islam that has been a mistake, then I encourage you to Correct me and invite me to the truth with good manners and good preaching and based on Kitabi Law Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and not based on desires. And I ask Allah the Almighty to bless me to be of those to accept that, to accept the haq. And as Imam Malik said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, when he was teaching in the Haram, teaching in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's Masjid. He said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, that Kullu Yurud Hu Kullu Yusibu Yukhti Illa Had Illa Sahiba Hadha Qabr. Imam Malik. He said that everyone gets some gets some things correct and some things wrong, except the inhabitant of that grave. And he pointed to the grave towards the grave of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam left us the Sunnah, and the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam Sunnah was based on Wahi, revelation. This is why Ahl Sunnah makes ta'deem of the ahadith, of ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ, that that is a part of our religion. That is what we base our religion based on the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, and what the Salaf of this Ummah were united upon their madhab, their minhaj, their understanding of how to understand the nusus of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet. ﷺ. So, with that being said, Ahabatifillah, when we deal with mistakes of one another, we have to know that when dealing with someone from Ahlul Sunnah is different than dealing with a Mubtadi'ah in general. And also that requires depending on the circumstances. But in general, a person from Ahlul Sunnah, you do your utmost to maintain their respect and status. So if an Alam from Ahlul Sunnah a Sheikh from Ahl Sunnah, a Talib al Ilm from Ahl Sunnah, a Da'i from Ahl Sunnah, or a person from a general person from Ahl Sunnah makes a mistake, then you deal with them by maintaining their status and refuting their mistake or advising them about the mistake if you have the tools to do so. That's in general. And if it's a person from 
and you put every, you try to make excuses as much as you can for that person falling into that error but you do not support their error you do not support their mistake as the prophet sallallahu said that you should not how, how do you help the oppressor you help the oppressor by advising him away from his oppression so likewise you help the person who has made a mistake by advising them with goodness but the person from Ahlul Bid'ah who has a minhaj which goes against the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi they're steadfast upon that then this one does not get the same respect because their minhaj in general they're already on a path of Bid'ah and desires and destruction so they do not get the same so when they make a mistake we don't look to the best possible way of of, uh, of giving them the benefit of the doubt but rather we say that that's in accordance with their bid'ah so they don't have the same degree of honor and respect those are just some of the benefits that we attain from the ulama with regard to this issue and it's imperative for us to know that blind following and to asab having prejudice blind prejudice towards mashayikh students of knowledge groups that this is not permissible this is impermissible and this is a path to hezbiyah and this is a pillar of hezbiyah and a destructive practice that will make you break away and split and fall under the hadith iftirak that the prophet ﷺ said his ummah will break into 73 sects all of them in the fire except one that the person who falls into Hezbiyah, that means they have now created a new sect or a new menhaj or a new methodology or they are on that path of the people of innovation. That's why it's imperative, Ahabatullah, to avoid the blind following as much as possible, except for when it's in those permissible times. For example, the one who doesn't have knowledge and they trust a student of knowledge or they trust the fatwa of a sheikh that's known from Ahl Sunnah. That means the person that's taken knowledge one is someone who's known from Ahl Sunnah, who's known for their ikhlas and their thabat ala sunnah. Then in this situation, because you don't have the knowledge, you don't have the tools, then in those issues you may follow that person. But to take someone's view over the Quran and the Sunnah, then this is impermissible. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and forgive us of our many sins and our many mistakes.